Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips and I want to talk to you today about testing. Um, I have a lot of information to share about testing. I'm going to start with some great information from Ohio. If you test positive for COVID-19 in Ohio, your result doesn't just stay with the health department. Positive results are sent to the Ohio Department of Public Safety and entered into the Law Enforcement Automated Data System or LEADS. This is used to alert officers of arrest warrants and protection orders and stolen vehicles and all that sort of thing. And now COVID-19. So isn't it nice that the government passes your positive test results and we know how reliable the tests are to law enforcement. The Emperor uh, DeWine's press secretary, Dan Tierney said, because he was asked about it, HIPAA laws don't apply to COVID testing. Now HIPAA, if you're not familiar with it, it's the, it's the law that was passed that basically says that your health records are your own. But you know, in COVID land, nothing is the way it is every place else. So your health records are not your own in Ohio in COVID land. They go to law enforcement. Apparently our former health director signed an order issue for this back in uh, uh, May. And it was intended that, you know, because it's so dangerous to have the flu or test positive for the flu, that law enforcement would be warned and they could put on their hazmat suits and everything if they pulled you over for a, a speeding ticket or, you know, because your taillight was out or something, because you always need a hazmat suit when you approach a car with a human in it. Um, but um, now uh, they're saying it's kind of shifted, just like I was talking about yesterday. You start with one thing and then it shifts. So they, they actually say that, um, now what they can do is there are criminal penalties um, for violating mask ordinances and not doing what the emperor says. And uh, so now knowing that somebody's uh, COVID positive gives law enforcement an opportunity to take action if the person's not following the rules. And also because our, our emperor is, uh, has built this very big network and is still building very big network of camps uh, to isolate people if somebody by chance wouldn't be isolating like they're supposed to it's good that their information's in the law enforcement system so anyway um we used to live in a republic and i think we don't anymore i think we're under the rule of um of an emperor i, I think i chose that name really well and i'm kind of proud of myself because everybody's referring to their um their uh, governor as emperor and empress now all right, so if tests are what are ginning up all this nonsense and all the stuff we talked about yesterday, um, let's talk about accuracy of the test. So um, new research has discovered that coronavirus tests may be finding dead traces from weeks old infections resulting in false, false positives that inflate the scale of the pandemic. Researchers at the University of Oxford's uh, Center for Evidence-Based Medicine and the University of West of England found that there's a risk of false positives because of how COVID-19 testing is being conducted. The scientists discovered that despite people with COVID-19 being infectious for only about a week, one test used to detect the disease can give a positive reading weeks and weeks and weeks after the infection has, uh, the patient has recovered. The team examined 25 studies on one of the widely used uh, tests, the PCR test, which I've been talking for months has some serious problems. Um, the test takes a sample from a COVID case and uses a process that increases the amount of DNA or genetic material. It's being used improperly. You know, we shouldn't be making any decisions based on this. But anyway, um, they said that the, the test, even in its improper use, magnifies the virus to the place where we're reporting people as positive who really aren't. And um, so, you know, the, the quote from the article is, evidence is mounting that a good proportion of new mild cases and people testing positives after quarantine or discharge from hospital are not infectious, but are simply clearing harmless virus particles, which their immune system has efficiently dealt with. So part of the problem is we are calling, we're ba making all of our decisions based on cases, all right? Um, and um, it, it, in cases, how many cases there are doesn't make any difference. It's how many symptomatic people there are. And we're not sorting that out anymore. So this is a very subtle shift that's given the ability to use a very unreliable test to gin up a set of numbers that means nothing and then make all kinds of ridiculous decisions uh, based on the ridiculous set of numbers. Um, just by a couple of examples here, uh, thousands of North Carolina residents were recently told that they had coronavirus, except they didn't. 6,700 people in just one county in North Carolina 
were given a te they were sent a text message uh, from the health department that they tested positive for positive for COVID-19 and then other another 500 on top of that so we have a total of 7200 got the notice by mail that they were positive but the results were incorrect due to a technical error uh, by the company that they use for contact tracing um, so the bottom line is we <laughs> this is from the commissioner we very quickly we began to work with the vendor to understand the issue and make sure it did not continue once corrected, we were told that 6,727 messages and 541 emails were sent to individuals who were already in the system, and then they um, made them send a correction after that. And so um, when you're dealing with a test and, a, and companies that are um, uh, doing administering the tests um, uh, that are so unreliable, it's just, it's I don't even know what to say. So. Um, I saved the best one for last. This comes from, uh, this information is about a company in Massachusetts um, that has been caught giving erroneous information. And, um, and when I tell you this story, you'll just wonder, how did this company even ever get a contract to do what they're doing, right? So um, Orange 3N is a Boston company that its employees previously had said um, had be, even before the COVID thing, they, they were in business before and said that they they were accusing them of shoddy practices. And so this uh, whole thing does seem to bring out the worst in everybody and the worst people and companies in every area. The company is under investigation by the Massachusetts Department of Health for problems due to hundreds of false positives. Uh, when some of these tests were redone, they turned out to be negative. And um, we see that again and again. I mean, I think you all know that our emperor tested positive in the afternoon and negative in the evening and chose the evening because if you're negative, you get to do what you want to do. So, you know, none of the rest of everybody. We've got to deal with isolation camps and, you know, closed schools and mask wearing and all this other garbage because uh, we're not the emperor. Isn't it? It's just like the ruling society, right? So the spike in cases caused a panic in Needham, Massachusetts, and I guess that's the point, right? And of course, one of the problems is the attention paid to the correction later is never as big as the attention paid to the, oh my gosh, we have new cases. People test positive for the flu. They're fine. Nobody says that. They're fine. We found them in the shopping uh, center parking lot or knocked on their door and said, hey, you want to get a test? <laughs> but we, they tested positive. It just, it, it is laughing. This would be a great comedy skit if it weren't causing such serious consequences for the people involved. All right, so this all started when the Department of Public Health ordered that 90% of residents and staff in long-term facilities had to be tested by May 25th in order, and the deadline was because there was reimbursement coming from the state, 130 million. And so a lot of what's going on is perverse incentives. So here in Ohio, for example, if you get somebody hospitalized for COVID, even if, with COVID, even if they're there for a stent, the state gets 180 grand, all right? So there's an incentive to get as many of these patients as you can. So if you start, for, you've heard this before, follow the money, you'll find out why a lot of what's going on is going on. All right, so um, Linkage Solutions is a, um, it's a, a company that advises long-term care uh, facilities all over the country, not just Massachusetts, about how to do things. And um, they issued a press release about this time and they said that this Orange 3N was, a, uh, it was, was marketing a breakthrough testing method with one of the highest accurate ra accuracy ratings in the market. Now, that is an amazing claim to make because if you remember, all of these tests were approved under emergency authorization and all they had to do was have 60 test tube um, uh, samples uh, examined and they were in business, so they were never properly vetted. So how anybody could be making the claim that this was some breakthrough method with a high level of accuracy is beyond me. Um, hundreds of turnkey mobile tests were ordered by the state of Massachusetts as $100 per test, and two months later, um, they suspended their activity based on the uh, state order. Now, I'm gonna tell you what happened here, but I wanna start by telling you that Keep in mind when I tell you this, that the company is still one of the largest providers of testing in the United States. 
and is testing between six and 12,000 tests a day in single locations and takes care of the billing of Medicare and all that sort of thing. So, so here's the story. Before it got into the coronavirus business, Orange Fan built itself as a consumer genetics pioneer promoting health and wellness through the use of diagnostics, genetics, and biotechnology. The company was founded in 2014 and it offered tests that ranged from like 30 bucks to almost $300, supposedly to help people learn what kind of food they should eat and exercise program and beauty products that would work best for their genetic profiles. And even whether they're genetically predisposed to have um, superhero traits like intelligence and strength. Okay, so this is the company promoted by this advisory firm to nursing homes to be really the bee's knees. A former Orange Fan empl employee who spoke on the condition of anonymity because of a non-disclosure agreement said the number one complaint when that person worked there um, was results not being returned to customers. Um, he didn't think the company would do very well handling the COVID-19 thing. He said, uh, unless dr things drastically changed since I left, not even testing, just bandwidth-wise, bandwidth they were already kind of drowning. Origin 3 quickly, uh, Origin 3N quickly got a lot of attention uh, when they started in their business because of partnerships that were kind of high profile, one of which was, was with the Baltimore Ravens. In September of 2017, long before this whole mess started, the company had um, linked up with the Ravens and they were gonna have this, this event called DNA Day. And the whole idea was 70,000 Ravens fans were gonna pour into the team stadium and they could get a free genetic testing kit. Well, the event never happened and the Ravens postponed it before um, fed federal officials told the Baltimore Sun they were working to determine whether any of the testing being offered by this company was subject to the requirements of the Clinical Laboratory Improvement Amendments of 1988. So what I'm telling you here is that in 2017, this company was being looked at by the feds because they highly suspected that they weren't they were doing something that was bogus all right so kind of amazing that they would uh, that they would uh, allow them to do what they're doing and they're still doing it check out your state your state might be ginning up their fake cases by using this company too so a year after DNA Day didn't happen, 17 former employees criticized the company in Bloomberg Business Week, alleging it, quote, habitually cut corners, tampered with or fabricated results and failed to meet basic scientific standards. Marketing, not science, the employees said was the company's priority. And so um, the bottom line is that um, when the COVID-19 thing happened, the company quickly got into the COVID-19 testing business Nobody apparently investigated them and said that they were already being investigated for fabricating results and not using good science. And uh, they said they wanted to become the partner of choice for uh, COVID-19 testing. Well, apparently it doesn't take much to become the partner of choice. So the nursing homes, not only did they get something from this company that advises nursing homes, but they also were told by Massachusetts Senior Care Association that they should use this company. And then the Massachusetts Senior Care Association said that they were told by government agencies, by the, by the state of Massachusetts to use them. So you've got an incompetent company that is already under investigation for false test results. And everybody's saying, they're the best, they're so accurate, we should use them, they're the partner of choice. Life in COVID land, right? So um, anyway, uh, when this whole thing happened, they, they started thinking something was wrong. Massachusetts Department of uh, Public Health spokesman told, um, uh, it says that Origin, Orge, Orge 3N uh, told the agency after it was contacted that errors in testing occurred because of a broken vial or contaminated plate during final processing. And they're trying to sort all that out right now. Um, and what triggered it was the same thing that you've heard in other states. Um, it happened in Florida where 18 labs reported all 100% positive COVID uh, tests in one day. And it's mathematically, statistically impossible for that to happen. So it raised some suspicion that something was wrong. And, um, and when they looked into it, something was wrong. And the question is, would the company have ever come forth and, and said something about it if um, it hadn't been 
told that there was something wrong and told to check into it. So um, what I'm telling you about all of this, you have, you have an inaccurate test that is being marketed and executed by, by incompetent companies. Um, and, and, and then all over the country, this is being used to gin up the cases because we've now decided that cases are something to be concerned about. Um, and, and they're not symptomatic cases, people who are hospitalized, but we don't have a lot of hospitalized people right now. Um, we don't have, there is, have, have, who do you know who's died of a flu lately? All right, we're ginning up the fear based on cases, and this is the nonsense being used to gin up the the, the, uh, the cases. All right. So anyway, enough of that. I mean, just because, like I said, life in COVID land. It's like living on a different planet or in a science fiction movie. We just don't. It just never comes to an end. It's a bad dream that isn't ending yet. Um, we are trying to do things for you. Um, we're this lawsuit, Make Americans Free Again, working on homeschooling. We're doing a lot of things in the advocacy area um, that people can't do for themselves. So check out our websites, um, makeamericansfreeagain.com, wellnessforumhealth.com, participate in our free conference calls. Um, NAFA does, I do two a week on those, uh, uh, makeamericansfreeagain.com. And we're not asking anybody to donate money uh, to us. We're the only people on the planet who say, don't give us any money. If you like what we do, buy something from our company, wellnessforumhealth.com. All right, that's it for now. Pass this on to people who you think would enjoy having their head hurt for a while while they learn more about all of this. And I'll be back to you tomorrow with more news.